Welcome to lesson number two in my video series on how to play piano using an iPad. In the first video, we covered things like quarter notes, half notes, finger numbers, treble clef. If you haven't watched that video, you're going to want to go watch that first before you watch this video. In this video, we're going to be introducing left hand playing and learn a simple piece for our left hand. Before we dive into that, I'd like to say a word about practicing. Practicing, carving out time every single day to practice your instrument, just five to 10 minutes, is how you're going to get better. Not just watching YouTube videos, but actually playing, practicing, and doing it with regularity. That is the secret to learning a musical instrument. So I encourage you to mark out a regular time for you to sit down with your iPad or with your piano or keyboard and practice regularly. Let's dive into the left hand. Music for the left hand is written on what we call the bass staff, and it has this symbol, the bass clef, on it. And that's how we know it's for the left hand. I'm going to slide my keyboard window down a little bit to find the next set of black and white keys below the one we used for the right hand. I'm gonna use my left hand down here. It's a little bit lower, but we're still going to be using C and the notes that step up from it. So find this C below these two black keys, and this time play it with your five finger. And now step up from there to D with your four finger, and go ahead and play E, F, and G. This is the position that your left hand is going to be in for this lesson. Take a look at the notes on the bass clef. You'll notice that C looks a little different than the C on the treble clef. This C in the bass clef is going to be on that second space up from the bottom. That is C. And then you'll notice D is on the line above that, E is on the next space, F is on the next line, and G is on that top space in the bass clef. Let's practice playing up and down a little bit. First, we're going to just step up from our five finger to our one finger, and let's say those finger numbers as we play. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's do that again. Five, four, three, two, one. Great. Now let's step down from one finger to five finger. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. And remember to say those finger numbers. Let's say it. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Great. Now we're going to step up and then back down. Ready? Five, Four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, five. Excellent. In this lesson, we're going to learn about a new note value. In the last lesson, we learned about quarter notes, which get one count, and half notes, which get two counts. Now we're going to learn about the whole note, which gets four counts. And whole notes, you can recognize in that they don't have a vertical line, which is called a stem coming up out of the note. They're just a little oval. So that is a whole note, it gets four counts. So if I were to play an E with my three finger on a whole note, I would count it like this. One, two, three, four. Can you play that with me? Let's count it together. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Let's learn a little tune called Merrily We Roll Along, which you might be familiar with. Here's what it looks like. You'll notice it has quarter notes and half notes, and at the end, it has a whole note. And you'll also notice it has numbers written at the beginning of it. This is what is called a time signature. A time signature gives us information about the music in each measure of a piece. If you remember, music is divided up into measures with lines called bar lines. And a time signature tells us how many counts of music are in each measure. You'll notice this music is in what we call 4-4 four, four time. The top number tells us how many counts are in each measure, four, so there are four counts of music in each measure. And the bottom number just reminds us that a quarter note gets one count. So let's take our position here in our left hand C position with five finger on C and the rest of the fingers stepping up from there. We're going to start merrily we roll along with our three finger on E. Let me just play it for you so that you can hear what it sounds like. Here we go. Hold it out. Hold it out. 
hold it out. One, two, three, four. Now you'll notice in the fourth bar, the music moves from a space note up to the next space note, skipping that line note in the middle. And we can refer to this as a skip. If a note steps from one line to the next space or one space to the next line, we call that a step. But if it skips from either a space to the next space or a line to the next line, we know that we're going to be skipping a note or skipping a finger. And in the fourth bar, we're going to skip the two finger and just go right from our three finger to our one finger. This is something in music reading that you really want to pay attention to. So now let's all try it nice and slowly. Three finger on E. And this time we're going to say the finger numbers as we play. All right, here we go. Ready, play. Three, four, five, four, three, 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 four, 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 three, one, one, three, four, five, four, three, 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 four, four, three, four, five, two, three, four. Excellent. Now's a good time to pause the video and practice this several times slowly saying the finger numbers. All right, I hope you're feeling more confident, more comfortable playing this, saying the finger numbers. Now let's play it. This time we're going to say the note names as we play. So go ahead and take that position again with your three finger on E. This time let's say those note names as we play. Here we go. Ready, play. E. D, C, D, E, 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 D, 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 E, G, G, E, D, C, D, E, 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 D, D, E, D, C, two, three, Four. Great. Go ahead and pause the video again and practice this several times saying the note names. Great job. We are cruising through this material. We already have done some Beethoven in the right hand with Ode to Joy and merrily we roll along in the left hand. In the next lesson, we're going to be putting both hands together. So you'll want to check that out. Remember, all the music for this whole series is available to download at simplybetterpiano.com slash iPad. Go there, enter your email address, and I will email you a PDF that you can print out and use in your practice. You can also check out my Quick Start Chord Guide, which is step-by-step -step instructions for how to play the five most common types of chords on the piano, or on the iPad in this case. That's at simplybetterpiano.com guide. Otherwise, thanks for being with me here in this lesson. I'll see you in the next video.